A medical esthetician's guide to layering your sunscreens properly. This includes uh, if you have a beard and facial hair. This includes a little chit chat about some of our stick sunscreens that have gotten a lot of hate recently. We're talking about powders. We're talking about pores and just about everything in between, specifically when it comes to pore screen. Dermalogica just launched this. And as a medical esthetician, Dermalogica is literally one of the brands that I was trained to use. I originally started using them back in 2008 when I went to aesthetic school and then I continued continued using them, some products are hit and miss, but I've had a few products that I've loved throughout the entire duration of Micro and actually before as well. Man, like their pre-cleanse and their microfoliant, <sighs> Those have been around for a long time. And if you don't know the history of Dermalogica, I actually met the founder and spoke about how she started not only the brand Dermalogica, but a literal school of dermal science. If you don't know that, then you know that. And although we're partnering with Dermalogica for a portion of this video, we need to talk about sunscreens and sunscreen layering, which I didn't learn in aesthetic school. Specifically when it comes to sunscreen layering, why would somebody do it? And how do you do it responsibly? Because it's not what a lot of people think. When people think of sunscreen layering, they think that if they layer two different formulas of sunscreen together, that they're going to get double the protection. If this is an SPF 40 and this is an SPF 50, I'm going to get an SPF 90 protection. I wish, but no, that's not how it works. Almost all sunscreens protect between 92 and 98% of the sun's rays, but that little number SPF on the front is talking about how soon we have to reapply it. And speaking of reapplication, why do we have to reapply it? Yes, sunscreens break down in the sun over time, but most importantly, when we're applying our sunscreen, we can't always see where it is or where it rubs in. And quite often we miss a few spots. Reapplying your sunscreen ensures that when you are out in the sun and in those hot moments of the day, that all of the space of your skin is covered and refreshed to make sure that you're staying as protected as possible. Because literally you can think of sunscreens as like an anti-cancer drug. When you think about it, yes, sunscreens prevent wrinkles and hyperpigmentation and fine lines and acne scars from darkening. But when you think about it, they're literally moisturizers with an anti-cancer drug. Like we know that sunscreens protect against skin cancer and there aren't a lot of medications or topical over-the-counter products that actually have this much proof at being anti-cancerous. So um, thank your sunscreen and reapply. Now, why would people want to layer their sunscreens if they're not getting more of a benefit? Well, layering your sunscreens can actually help make sure that you're getting the perfect blend for your skin. Especially if you're someone who has like a really oily T-zone and nose area, you have large pores on the nose or you're really oily in some spaces and then dry in others. Or if you have facial Hair, if you're someone who has a beard and you need to make sure that you're applying things properly, or if you have really sensitive eyes and you cry about everything and it's not just because of your emotions and how deeply you love others in the world and you're just, you know, constantly overwhelmed by the amount of beauty and joy and pain that constantly surrounds us, you know, sensitive eyes. <laughs> we need to make sure that we have something that protects the eyes as well as the face that gives you the right finish for either under makeup or on its own. And that is where sunscreen layering comes in. Now, here's a medical SD tip and you're gonna wanna write this down. Layering your sunscreens does not mean that you're adding an SPF 50 plus an SPF 40 to equal an SPF 90. This is sunscreen, not math. Thank God. <laughs> when you are layering sunscreens, the best rule of thumb is just to go with the lower number. So if you're layering an SPF 40 with an SPF 15, you're just gonna wanna stick with the 15 to keep it safe. If you have a 40 versus a 50, you're also gonna wanna stick with the 40. It's better to stick with a lower one just to make sure that you're fully protected. But that being said, you can layer in two ways. One is similar to multi-masking, and number two is actually doing multiple swipes or multiple layers, especially when it comes to things like sticks and powders. But let's talk about this multi -masking Asking multi layering technique first. Are you someone with big pores, or do you have areas of your face where you get shiny and others that are dry? This is the perfect situation to layer sunscreens like a map. Literally, think of your face like a map. For example, this little T zone and this area of my nose and forehead tends to have larger pores. I get sebaceous filaments, they're not the funnest, and it tends to be much more oily. Now, I am oily on the other areas of my face, but sometimes I want a dewy, fresh glow. I'm also a little bit more sensitive around my eye areas, and I don't want to spend more money on sunscreen that I have. To. In a case like mine, using a sunscreen on my T-zone that literally helps to blur my pores and to help make them look smaller, as well as something that's safe for use around the eyes, and then using something that helps keep the rest of my face mattified is going to be the perfect mix. Now, with a map, I do want you to think of the borders as like, seashores in an ocean. You know how the tide comes in and out and the water kind of overlaps the shore a little bit? I always want you to overlap. Don't like put one on your nose and then put this on your cheek and miss the sides of your nose. Make sure that you are overlapping these a little bit. If you do struggle with large pores, this has been an absolute favorite. I tested this in a YouTube short and I didn't know you're supposed to shake it. I have fallen in love with this. Dermalogica used to make one of my favorite physical sunscreens. This is the SPF 30 Invisible Physical Defense. This is good. I would give it like an eight out of 10 on the 
the white cast scale, it's not 100%, but this poor screen, I would give a nine out of 10. And the best part is that it's an SPF 40 and it literally has niacinamide, microalgae, and vitamin E that help to blur pores, help to reduce the sebum and the oil that my nose creates naturally, hydrate it with that algae, and then also help with any scarring and irritation with that vitamin E. This is fantastic. I can use this all over my face, but my biggest issue with this sunscreen is how tiny it is. I wish this came in a jumbo bottle and this is a little bit expensive, but holy guacamole, I would pay five times the amount for this for a tube five times as big. This is also completely mineral, so I can literally put it on and practically in my eyes without irritation. And for me, because I do want to keep my cost and budget down, this is so perfect to apply to the middle of my face and my sensitive eye areas. And then I can go in other places on my face with something that does tend to sting my eyes a little bit more, but that I can use all over. This is the Black Girl Sunscreen Make It Matte. This is much more affordable and it is a mattifying sunscreen. So on these other areas where I'm still oily, but my pores aren't as large, I can use these to keep things mattified. Now, I absolutely love this. It's only one fluid ounce. If I could afford to do the two finger rule three times a day with this on my face, I absolutely would. But for the price, I just need to be cognizant of how I'm using this in my routine. Absolutely worth every single penny. And if you have large pores, if you struggle with like blackheads or sebaceous filaments, those little white or like golden amber nuggets in your nose or on your chin, especially if you're prone to period breakouts, this is a must have. You need to get this. But if you're someone who's on a budget, I'd recommend using it in specific areas like the forehead or the eyes, um, just because it does get really expensive if you try to use it all over down the neck, on the chest, etc. That's actually another person to map layer your sunscreens. For example, if you have one that you love, but that's very expensive, you can just put it on certain areas of the face where you're more breakout prone or more irritated or have larger pores. And then you can follow up with a less expensive sunscreen elsewhere on the face to help keep you protected, but keep your cost down. Another great reason to layer sunscreens is if you have multiple conditions. For example, my cheeks tend to get really, really, really red. I have subclinical rosacea and dermatographia. So when I even just touch my skin, do you see how it gets all pink? It can be really frustrating. And then combine having this happen and being in the sun, I don't know if I'm sunburned or not. I recently found a K-Beauty sunscreen that is at the top of my list. This is taking a spot in the top five K-Beauty sunscreens I've ever used. This is from Mix Soon. It's the Centella SPF 50 sun cream. It does have a fragrance from lavender, so be aware of that. But I got this on Style Korean and it's great for redness. Because it's 100% mineral, this is super safe to use around my eyes, my nose, etc. especially for those large pores. It's literally called the pore screen. So this is an example where if I have one condition or one issue here and another issue in this area of my face or vice versa, you can use the mapping technique to make sure that your sunscreen is being applied appropriately based on skin conditions or flare ups that may be happening on different areas of your face. Which also brings us to another perfect reason to layer sunscreen. And that's if you want a mattified and a dewy glow. Let's say that you can rub sunscreen in your eyes all day and it never burns and you love a good chemical sunscreen. Again, this one, make it matte from Black Girl Sunscreen. Absolutely fantastic. Rub this all in your T-zone and in your eyes and where you get oiliest. Uh, I can't do that without being in pain, but if you want to, go for it. This is a really interesting texture. It feels just like the super goop, only it dries down mattified. And if I know that I'm gonna be out somewhere where I'm sweating, this is a great option that literally helps keep me matte. At the same time, I did mattifying powders on my skin because of my acne for so many years. Literally when I was in aesthetic school using Dermalogica, I remember using so many of their like poor wicking clays to try to get my acne like off my <laughs> face. Some of them actually worked very well, but not as well as the microfoliant. Microfoliant is bomb diggity. But it wasn't until later on in my life that I realized, oh, I, I want to embrace dewy skin, a healthy dewy glow without looking oily or gross. The Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel is one of, if not my favorite K-Beauty sunscreen ever. One of the best sunscreen formulas. It is Oh, I'm all out. Well, no, I'm all out. Oh no, there you go. I love this. And this gives me the most dewy, beautiful glow. Now, while this is amazing, I don't always want this dewy, beautiful glowiness on my forehead or on the tip of my nose that naturally just gets so oily and accentuates the large pores that I have or the little rosacea spots that tend to flare up. So this would be a perfect example of me being able to layer my sunscreens using the mapping technique, slightly overlapping them in areas like the forehead and kind of on those borders, just the way a tide or a shoreline would overlap the land and the ocean. And this helps me stay protected, but also make sure that I'm working with my face and working with the areas of my face, my biology, that get oily, along with giving me the kind of finish and dewy sheen that I like, so I literally don't have to wear makeup. Like, Look, I have zero makeup on. These are eyelash extensions, zero makeup. And I feel good going outside like this. Just, I never thought that would be possible for me. 
but it is. Now let's say you do want to wear makeup. This is the perfect time to layer something like a powder sunscreen. And you're probably like, Cassandra, what is this foundation in a bag you've got? Well, I had one of my favorite powder sunscreens explode. And um, I'm a thrifty <gasps> and I didn't want to throw it out because it was expensive. So this is my Jane Iredale powder sunscreen in a bag. While the Ziploc may not be the perfect example, the example of a powder sunscreen is also a great way to make sure that you are both reapplying and layering your sunscreen properly. You see, these sunscreen powders are fantastic, but when they say like SPF 40 on the bottle, it sounds like they're not actually giving us that SPF 40 because you need to apply a thick layer of powder to get that SPF protection. And most people like you and me are just kind of dusting this onto the skin, we're not sitting here making sure that the layer is this thick. Because of that, sunscreen powders are a great way to layer. They're a great way to set your makeup or your foundation to make sure that you're protected throughout the day or set a sunscreen that isn't the perfect finish for you. And it's a great way to reapply, but it just shouldn't be your primary application of sunscreen. And this is fantastic because for me, if I am getting a little bit oily throughout the day, I can literally dab this on my oily areas. I'm reapplying, I'm layering, and I'm staying protected without succumbing to any little gaps. I'm making sure that I kind of catch them all. Again, love this one from Jane Iredale. Um, it's refillable and interchangeable, so you don't have to throw it away when you are running out. Only mine exploded in my suitcase, so thank you. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh yeah, you can use this as a contour too. If you get a different color, it's a little darker or lighter than your skin, highlight. Contour, I got you, baby. Gotta get the other side too. <laughs> now, a big old topic of conversation has been sunsticks recently. I am obsessed with sunsticks, but recently some people have been questioning if this actually gives you the SPF 50 that it's labeled on the stick. And specifically, when a lot of these products are tested, they are tested with full coverage, meaning that the sunscreen is fully covering the skin and it's rubbed in. Now, unfortunately, when a lot of people apply this, they go like this, 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 and this, and they're like, I'm done. Does it look like this covered my entire face? No, baby. That's why a sunstick is perfect for layering, specifically to layer over other sunscreens to make sure you're covered or for reapplication. Now, I will say I have used sunsticks for a primary application. I think I'm pretty good at like slathering this on. I definitely tend to um, approach this like a sandwich and then I use my hands to rub it in. But dermatologist Dr. Dre has done a great job showing how you can apply sun sticks to get the full coverage. But then Michelle, PhD chemist from Lab Muffin Beauty Science did a video talking about how sun sticks might not be covering enough, especially if they're swiping like this. So when in doubt, always rub it out. Don't forget to reapply and just make sure that you're doing so properly. I'm probably gonna have to end up testing this for myself or looking into more research because again, I've relied on sun sticks for quite a few years and I love them. But you definitely wanna make sure that you're rubbing them in and not missing any spots. But this is why layering can be so perfect. Also, Isn't Trees Watery Sun Gel is a very hydrating, dewy formula. This one, the sun stick, is slightly more mattifying. Not as matte as the Black Girl sunscreen make it matte. But as you can see, this kind of helps to mattify down my skin. So if you really wanted to, you could use these on different areas of the face and layer them like a map with a little bit of overlap to make sure that you're oily and dewy in the right respective areas. Now again, what if you have sensitive eyes or a beard? This is where you're going to want to use your mineral or eye sensitive sunscreens in those really delicate areas like by the eyes or the corners of the nose that can kind of get painful. And then a less expensive, more cosmetically elegant sunscreen for other areas of the face. Again, two of my absolute favorites have been the pore screen for my eyes. This works so well and the niacinamide actually helps me brighten my under eyes like eye creams. I will use this as a morning eye cream because it literally prevents my under eyes from getting damaged from the sun. It has niacinamide to brighten and like has the microalgae for hydration. But what more could I want? Anyways, I also love this if you want a budget version. This is from Korea. This is the Rovectin Skin Essentials Aqua Soothing Pore Perfector SPF 50 PI plus 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 advanced formula hypoallergenic non-chemical filter Rovectin. Try saying that five times fast. What is up with the names? This one is a completely mineral filter that does not feel mineral. This feels like a chemical filter, but it's not. It is a budget-friendly version, and this is great for the eyes. I've had some people, friends, family, and clients who have the most sensitive eyes, literally everything burns them. And this was the one sunscreen that didn't. So this is fantastic for those under eye areas. And we can't forget dudes with beards. If you've got a beard, you might need to multi-layer your sunscreen to get what you need. For example, if you do have a lot of redness in the center of your face, you might wanna use a sunscreen that has a little bit of a tint, something that helps to kind of blur that. But if you go and use a tinted sunscreen on your beard or your facial hair, you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna look chonky and cakey and 
nasty. <laughs> but if you wanted to, you could use a tinted version on those areas that have more redness or the areas that you want to smooth out and then use an invisible sunscreen on that beard area. One that I absolutely love is this one. This is from Skin1004. This is the Centella High Lucica Water Fit Sunscreen SPF 50 PA++++ made with pure Centella from Madagascar. Again, what is up with these K-beauty sunscreen names? I kind of love it, but also WTF. Let me just say, if I ever make a sunscreen, I want it to have like the longest name in history, okay? This is such a good, watery, hydrating, beautiful formula. This actually works so well on facial hair. I obviously don't have facial hair, but do you know what I do have? Hair hair. Watch this. Look at this. Obviously you shouldn't put sunscreen in your hair hair, but I'm gonna, you know, apply this as if I'm applying it to my part. Look at how this works. It takes a second to rub in, but do you see how this like doesn't overly stick to my hair? If you're someone who has a beard or facial hair, this is fantastic. This is a great one to use. The other really good one that I got from Style Korean is this one that blends in in seconds. Look at how quickly this blends in. Literally a couple of seconds tops. And this is also fantastic for the hair. Again, I would never recommend you like rub sunscreen into your hair like this. Hairline and exposed scalp when you're at the beach or hiking, yes. <laughs> in the hair, no. But I am willing to try and buy and test things so that you don't have to, and yes, your acne big sister, resident medical SD bestie Cass Cass is literally willing to rub sunscreen into her hair to show you which ones are actually sheer, vetted and approved by me and the follicles protruding from my scalp. <laughs> Again, layering sunscreen can be done responsibly. And honestly, if you're someone who has always struggled with sunscreen or struggled wearing makeup over sunscreen or struggled with your beard because you got one and trying to get sunscreen to rub into it, save this little guide for later. Literally text it or email it to yourself because this is going to be your cheat sheet on how to layer sunscreens using the map and overlap method. Now, again, you can layer sunscreens in layers like a cake over one another, specifically with powders or with little sunscreen sticks. You could do the same with traditional sunscreen but just remember to always go with the SPF of the lower one. I hope that this helps you and also kind of opens your eyes to some of the different formulas that are out there based on how sensitive or red or oily or dry or dewy your skin is or what your skin needs. I've literally listed all of my favorites in the little tab here. And then I've also listed them down below along with that video of the Dermalogica founder and how she created this line. Again, Jane Warwand is such a brilliant woman. She is an absolute inspiration to me as an esthetician. And I look at her and her life story and what she's done for this industry, trying to make sure that education is accessible and the good products are accessible and that other estheticians can actually use and provide their clients with good things while also being able to make a living helping other people with their skin journeys. She is so amazing. Please watch that video. And again, a huge thank you to Dermalogica for working with us on a portion of this video to make sure that you're empowered with the knowledge that I wish I had when I was first in aesthetic school to give you the medical esthetician guide to how to layer sunscreen responsibly in ways that will protect you and make you look and feel your best. Again, always remember to stay high hydrated both orally and topically, reapply that SPF, you know which ones I've been loving. And always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.